The ocean is utterly terrifying. No matter if you're swimming, scuba diving, whatever recreational activity you want to try and justify it with, it is foreign territory and there's things deep down in the ocean we cannot even begin to comprehend things from our nightmares. And as you guys are going to find out in today's episode, 12 very disturbing stories from eyewitnesses sharing strange accounts of things that go bump below the surface of the water. You guys won't want to miss this one. Here we go. This didn't happen to me, but it was told to me by a close friend who has been a deep sea diver for over two decades. He's a seasoned professional, not prone to exaggeration or fabrication. A few years back, he was on a job repairing an underwater pipeline off the coast of Redacted. It was a deep dive, pushing the limits of what's possible with current diving technology. He was working alone that day, with only his trusty ROV for company. As he was welding a section of the pipeline, he turned and saw, emerging from the murky depths, a humanoid figure. But this was no ordinary human. Its skin had an ethereal luminescence. Webbed hands and feet propelled it through the water with a grace and agility that defied belief at those crushing depths. My friend was frozen in shock as the figure approached. It came right up to him, its luminous eyes boring into his with an intense, inscrutable gaze. He said he felt like it was staring into his very soul. They remained locked in this strange encounter for what felt like an eternity though in reality, it was probably only a minute. Then, as quickly as it appeared, the figure vanished back into the abyss. One moment it was there, the next it had merged into the black water and was gone, leaving no trace of its presence. With shaking hands, my friend finished up his work as quickly as he could and made his way back to the surface. To this day, he doesn't know what to make of the experience. He's dived all over the world and seen all manner of strange creatures in the deep, but nothing like this. It shook him profoundly. Now you tell me what it was. Mermaid. Aquatic humanoid. Alien. Interdimensional being. Your guess is as good as mine. All I know is, the depths of our oceans hold mysteries we can scarcely begin to fathom. This encounter certainly makes you wonder what else might be out there in the untold leagues under the sea. I hope this email finds you well. My name is Eddie. I'm 68 years old and I've been living in the Florida Keys for the better part of my life. I'm writing to you because, well, something happened a couple of months back and it's been eating at me ever since. I've been reading your blog for a while now, and I figure if anyone would understand, it's you and your readers. It was a night like any other, or at least that's how it started. Me and a couple of my buddies, we were out on the water, doing some night fishing. Jim, he's been my best friend since we were in diapers. Then there's Bob and Hank. We go way back too. We were a few miles off the coast, just shooting the breeze and waiting for a bite. I remember it was around midnight when Jim first noticed something odd. He said the water looked funny, like it was glowing. Now, we've all seen bioluminescence before, but this was different. It was more localized, and a weird color too, kind of a sickly green. We were all staring at this patch of glowing water when suddenly, something broke the surface. At first, I thought it was a dolphin, or maybe a small whale. But as it rose higher, we could see it was something else entirely. It had a head like a human, but not quite. The features were all wrong, elongated and distorted, and its eyes, God, its eyes were huge and entirely black, no white at all. It had no nose to speak of, just slits. The mouth was the worst part though. When it opened, it was full of these long, needle-like teeth. The body, what we could see of it, was like an eel or a snake, but with these long, spindly arms. The skin was translucent, and it seemed to be glowing from within. 
We were all frozen, just staring at this thing. It seemed to be studying us too. Its head was weaving back and forth like it was trying to get a better look. Then, quick as a flash, one of those long arms shot out of the water and grabbed the side of the boat. The whole thing rocked and we nearly capsized. Bob, he grabbed a gaff and started swinging at the arm. The creature let out this unearthly shriek and let go. We were all yelling and scrambling. I got the engine started and gunned it. As we pulled away, I swear I could see more of them under the water, their glowing forms twisting and undulating beneath the waves. We made it back to shore, but we were all shaken up pretty bad. Bob, he hasn't been the same since. He drinks more than he used to, and he won't go out on the water anymore. I tried to tell a few people about what happened, but they all looked at me like I was crazy. I even went to the Coast Guard, but they just laughed me out of the office. I've been thinking a lot about that night, and I realized there are a few more details that might be of interest to you and your readers. First off, I remember the water being unusually warm. Now, the Gulf Stream keeps the waters around the Keys pretty balmy year-round, but this was different. And there was a strange smell too, like sulfur or rotting eggs. I wonder if it had something to do with those creatures. Speaking of which, I've been doing some research since my last email. I found some old stories from the indigenous people of the Caribbean, the Taino. They had legends of a creature they called the Makanalu, which roughly translates to deadly wave. They described it as a serpentine monster with human-like features that would drag fishermen and swimmers to their doom. The legends say the Makanalu lived in underwater caves and could glow like the moon to lure its prey. It's a little too similar to what we saw to be a coincidence, don't you think? There's something else too. A few weeks after our encounter, Hank was out walking his dog on the beach. He says he found a dead fish washed up on the shore, but it wasn't like any fish he'd ever seen. It was pale and had this weird gelatinous flesh. And here's the kicker. It had a humanoid face, just like the creature we saw. Hank took some pictures with his phone, but the quality isn't great. I've attached them to this email. Maybe one of your readers might be able to identify what it is. Lastly, and this is the part that really gives me chills, Jim swears he's been having dreams about the creature. He says he sees it swimming in the depths, and it's calling to him beckoning him to join it in the abyss. He says the dreams are so vivid, he wakes up feeling like he's drowning. I'm really worried about him. He hasn't been himself since that night. None of us have, if I'm being honest. I don't know what any of this means, but I feel like we've stumbled onto something big here, something ancient and dangerous. I just hope we haven't stirred up more than we can handle. I know I described it in my previous emails, but there are some details I left out, partly because I was still trying to process what I'd seen and partly because, well, I didn't want to seem crazy. The thing is, when the creature rose out of the water, I got a real good look at it. And the more I think about it, the more disturbing it becomes. Its skin wasn't just translucent, it was like it was constantly shifting and changing like the surface of a soap bubble and there were these veins or arteries visible beneath the skin, pulsing with this sickening greenish-yellow light. But the worst part was its eyes. I said before that they were black, but that's not entirely accurate. They were more like voids, like staring into a bottomless abyss. And when it looked at me, I swear I could feel it looking into my soul. It was like it knew everything about me, all my secrets and fears, Ever since that night, I haven't been able to shake the feeling that something followed me back from the water. I keep seeing shadows out of the corner of my eye, and I swear I can hear whispers in the night in a language I can't understand. And then there's the sickness. It started a few days after our encounter. At first, it was just a general feeling of malaise, but it quickly got worse. I've been suffering from severe nausea, headaches, and this weird rash that's spread over most of my body. 
The rash, it's not like anything I've ever seen. It's raised and bumpy, and it glows faintly in the dark, just like the creature's skin. I've been to the doctor, but they can't find anything wrong with me. They say it's probably just stress and that I should get some rest, but I know it's more than that. I can feel it in my bones, like something is changing inside me. And it's not just me. Bob and Hank, they're sick too. Jim, well, I haven't heard from him in a few days. I've been calling and calling, but no answer. I don't know what to do. I'm scared that whatever we encountered that night has done something to us, something irreversible. I keep thinking about those old Taino legends, about how the Makanalu would drag people to the depths. What if that's what's happening to us? What if we're being changed, transformed into something not human? I'm sorry to dump all this on you, but I don't know where else to turn. If you or any of your readers have any information, any idea what might be happening to us, please let me know. I'm desperate for answers. And please, if you don't hear from me again, tell my story. Let people know what's out there. In the deep. Maybe it's too late for me. But it might not be too late for others. Thank you, Josh, for everything. Let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered what mysteries the ocean depths might hold? What creatures might be lurking in the darkness, far beyond our reach and understanding? I know I have, but I never imagined I would come face to face with one of those mysteries. It happened on a routine patrol in the early hours of the morning. The sky was clear, the sea was calm, and there was no reason to suspect that anything was out of the ordinary. But as we would soon discover, the ocean is full of secrets, and some of them are best left undisturbed. I was a young sailor then, fresh out of training and eager to prove myself. I had heard stories of strange encounters and unexplained phenomena at sea, but I always dismissed them as tall tales and superstitions. Now, I served in the Navy for 25 years working my way up from a seaman to a lieutenant commander. Most of my career was spent on submarines, running silent and deep beneath the waves. I was serving on the USS Baton Rouge, a nuclear-powered attack sub. We were on a routine patrol in the North Atlantic, off the coast of Iceland. It was supposed to be a simple mission. Monitor Russian subactivity, gather intel, stay out of sight. We were about 200 miles offshore, cruising at a depth of 400 feet. It was the middle of the night, and most of the crew was asleep in their bunks. I was on watch in the control room when the sonar operator reported a strange contact. At first, we thought it was a whale or maybe a giant squid. But as we got closer, we realized it was something else entirely. It was huge, bigger than our sub and it was moving fast. The thing slammed into our hull with incredible force. We were thrown around like rag dolls, and alarms started blaring all over the ship. I thought we were going to be crushed like a tin can. The captain ordered us to emergency surface. As we rose to the top, I caught a glimpse of the thing through the periscope. It was like something out of a nightmare, a mass of writhing tentacles each one thicker than a tree trunk. They were wrapped around the sub, squeezing and pulling. We finally broke the surface, and the creature let go. We limped back to port, badly damaged but still afloat. The captain ordered us to keep quiet about what happened. He said if we talked, we'd be court-martialed or worse. I found out later that our sub wasn't the only one attacked. There were reports from other ships and subs all describing the same thing. A monster from the deep, with tentacles strong enough to crush steel. The Navy hushed it up, of course. They said it was a Russian secret weapon, or maybe some kind of rare deep-sea creature. I've kept my mouth shut for 35 years, but now that I'm retired, I figure it's time the truth came out. People deserve to know what's really out there, in the depths of the ocean and the Navy needs to come clean about what they're hiding. When we first picked it up on sonar, 
It was below us. Way below us. We were at 400 feet, but this thing was at least a couple thousand feet down. That's depths that only a handful of subs can reach, and even then, they don't stay down there for long. But this creature, it seemed right at home in the abyss. It moved through the water like it was nothing, faster than anything that big had a right to move, and when it hit us, it hit us hard. Our sub was built to withstand the crushing pressure of the deep sea, but this thing, it nearly crumpled our hull like a soda can. I remember looking at the sonar readings after the attack. The thing was massive, bigger than anything I'd ever seen. It had to be at least 200 feet long, maybe more. And those tentacles, they were like steel cables. They could have ripped our sub apart if they wanted to. I don't know what kind of creature could grow that big and that strong, but I know it's not something that evolved in the shallows. No, this thing came from the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean, where the pressure is like a thousand atmospheres and the sun never shines. Maybe it was some kind of prehistoric monster, something that's been down there for millions of years, just waiting for something to stumble into its domain. Or maybe it was something else entirely, something that doesn't belong on this planet at all. All I know is that it wasn't natural. It wasn't like anything I'd ever seen or heard of before, and I think that's why the Navy was so quick to cover it up. They didn't want people to know that there were things out there that we couldn't explain, things that could destroy us without even trying. A few years after my own encounter, I heard a story from a friend of mine who was working in the British Merchant Navy. He was a radio operator on a cargo ship, the MSC Napoli, back in 92. They were on a run from Southampton to New York, carrying a load of cars and electronics. It was a routine trip, nothing out of the ordinary. They were about halfway across the Atlantic when they ran into trouble. It was the middle of the night and most of the crew was asleep, but my friend was on duty in the radio room. He told me he started picking up some strange distress calls on the emergency channel, ships reporting sightings of something huge in the water, something that was attacking them. At first, he thought it was some kind of prank or hoax, but then the calls started coming in more frequently and they were getting more desperate captains saying their ships were being dragged under, crew members screaming in terror. And then, it happened to them. Something hit the Napoli with incredible force, nearly capsizing the ship. My friend said he was thrown across the radio room like a ragdoll. Alarms started going off all over the ship, and crew members were running around in a panic. They managed to get the ship stabilized, but it was badly damaged. And that's when they saw it. A massive serpentine creature, rising out of the water like something from a nightmare. My friend said it had to be at least 100 feet long, with a head the size of a bus and teeth like swords. The creature wrapped itself around the ship, crushing the hull like it was made of paper. My friend said he could hear the metal groaning and twisting, and water started pouring in through the cracks. They sent out an SOS, but it was too late. The creature dragged the ship under in a matter of minutes. My friend managed to make it to a lifeboat with a handful of other survivors, but most of the crew went down with the ship. They were adrift for two days before they were finally picked up by a passing freighter. And when they were debriefed by the authorities, they were told in no uncertain terms to keep their mouths shut about what they'd seen. My friend said he tried to tell people about it over the years, but no one would believe him. They said he was crazy, or lying, or just looking for attention. But he knows what he saw, just like I know what I saw. And it makes you wonder, how many other stories like this are out there? How many ships and crews have been lost to these creatures over the years without anyone ever knowing the truth? It's a frightening thought. Because if there are monsters like this lurking in the depths, waiting to strike, then no one who goes out on the water is truly safe. 
I've spent a lot of years trying to make sense of what happened to me and my crew that night. And the more I think about it, the more I wonder if we were just the unlucky ones. If maybe these creatures have been out there all along, and we're just now starting to realize it. Think about it. The ocean covers more than 70% of our planet, and we've barely scratched the surface of what's down there. We've explored less than 5% of the deep sea, and every time we send a camera or a sub down there, we discover something new and strange. Who's to say there aren't more creatures like the ones that attacked us, hiding in the depths where we can't see them? Who's to say they haven't been there for millions of years, just waiting for us to stumble into their territory? And if that's the case, then maybe all of our advances in technology and exploration are just making things worse. Maybe every time we send a ship or a sub into the deep, we're just ringing the dinner bell for these monsters. It's a chilling thought, but it's one that keeps me up at night. Because if there are more things like that out there, then we're not just dealing with a few isolated incidents. We're dealing with a whole hidden world, one that we're just barely beginning to understand. And the more we learn about it, the more dangerous it seems. Because these creatures, they're not just animals. They're something else entirely. Something that defies our understanding of biology and evolution. So maybe the real question isn't what they are or where they came from. Maybe the real question is, what happens when they decide they've had enough of us invading their space? What happens when they come for us, not just one ship at a time, but in force? I don't have the answers. Thanks for listening. I was working a job near a big lake, way out in the middle of nowhere. It was just me and my equipment, no one else around for miles. I had my theodolite set up on a tripod, taking measurements of the shoreline. All of a sudden, the water started churning like crazy. It looked like it was boiling, with big bubbles rising up to the surface. I thought maybe it was a gas pocket or something, but then this huge, dark shape started to rise up out of the water. At first, I thought it was a submarine, but as it got closer, I could see it was something else entirely. It was a craft of some kind, but not like any boat or ship I'd ever seen. It was big and round, like a giant metal ball. It had no windows or markings, just this smooth, shiny surface. The craft rose up until it was hovering just above the surface of the lake. It hung there for a moment, completely still and silent. I was frozen just staring at it in disbelief. Then, without warning, this big wave of energy shot out from the craft. It was like a ripple in the air, distorting everything it touched. It hit me full on, knocking me off my feet and sending my equipment flying. The pain was immediate and intense. It felt like my skin was on fire, like I was being cooked from the inside out. I could smell my own flesh burning, I think I must have passed out from the pain. When I came to, the craft was gone. There was no sign of it, just a big patch of black mist hanging over the spot where it had been. The mist slowly dissipated, fading away into nothing. I was in bad shape, my skin was blistered and peeling, and I could barely move without crying out in pain. I managed to drag myself to my truck and call for help on the radio. I spent weeks in the hospital getting skin grafts and treatments for the burns. The doctors said they'd never seen anything like it. They couldn't explain what could have caused that kind of damage. Some people believe there are other dimensions or parallel universes that exist alongside ours. They think sometimes things can cross over from one to the other. That craft, the way it appeared and disappeared, the strange energy it gave off, it all fit with the idea of an interdimensional traveler. I decided to report my experience to MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. They're a group that investigates UFO sightings and encounters. I figured if anyone would take me seriously, it would be them. 
I got in touch with a MUFON investigator and told him my story. He listened patiently, asking questions and taking notes. When I was done, he sat back and nodded. It's not the first time we've heard a story like this, he said. There have been other reports of crafts emerging from water and of people being injured by strange energy fields. He told me MUFON had a theory that these crafts were using bodies of water as portals to travel between dimensions. The water acted as a kind of gateway or doorway, allowing them to pass through. But why would they want to come here? I asked. What do they want from us? The investigator shook his head. That's the big question, he said. We don't know their motives or intentions, but based on the reports we've received, it seems like they're not always friendly. He said MUFON would investigate my case and add it to their database. They'd compare it to other similar reports and see if they could find any patterns or clues. I left the meeting feeling a little better, knowing I wasn't alone in my experience. I still think about that day by the lake and about the craft that came out of the water. I wonder where it came from and why it chose me to attack. A few weeks after I spoke with MUFON, I got a call from a man who claimed to be with the government. He wouldn't give me his name or agency, but he said he'd heard about my experience and wanted to talk. We met in a quiet park on the edge of town. The man looked like your typical G-man. Dark suit, sunglasses, expressionless face. But there was something about him that made me uneasy, like he wasn't quite human. He told me the government had been tracking these interdimensional incursions for years. They had a special task force dedicated to investigating and containing them, and they were very interested in people like me, who had direct contact with the crafts. The man said I had a choice. I could join their task force, use my experience to help them understand and combat these interdimensional threats or I could forget about the whole thing and go back to my normal life. I asked him what would happen if I refused. He just smiled and said, I don't think you want to find out. I won't tell you what I decided, but I will say this. If you ever see a craft like the one I saw rising up out of the water, don't stick around to see what happens next. Run as fast as you can and pray it doesn't follow you. I've been working as a ferry operator in Puget Sound, Washington for the better part of a decade, but something happened last week that I just can't get out of my head. It was a routine crossing, nothing out of the ordinary, when I spotted something in the water that I can't quite explain. It was about halfway through the trip when I noticed this massive shape just below the surface. At first, I thought it might be a whale or something. But as I got a better look, I realized it was unlike any creature I've ever seen. The thing was huge, easily as big as the fairy itself, and it had this weird, almost geometric shape to it. It was hard to make out exactly what it looked like through the murky water, but it definitely wasn't like any fish or marine mammal I've ever come across. As I watched, this thing started moving. And that's when things got really crazy. It took off like a shot, cutting through the water at a speed that shouldn't have been possible for something that size. I mean, I've seen some fast fish in my day, but this was on a whole other level. I tried to keep my eye on it, but it disappeared into the depths so quickly that I lost track of it almost immediately. I was left there standing at the helm, my jaw hanging open, trying to make sense of what I'd just seen. Now, I'm not the kind of guy who believes in sea monsters or anything like that, but I gotta tell you, this thing has me questioning everything. I keep running it over in my head, trying to come up with some logical explanation, but I'm drawing a blank. I haven't told many people about what I saw, just a couple of close buddies who work on the ferry with me. They think maybe I was just seeing things, that the light was playing tricks on my eyes or something. But I know what I saw, and it was real. 
I don't know what that thing was or where it came from, but I can't shake the feeling that there's something out there in the sound that we don't know about. Something big and fast and strange. It's got me looking over my shoulder every time I'm out on the water now, wondering if I'll see it again. I've been turning this whole thing over in my head ever since it happened. And the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that what I saw out there in the sound wasn't from this world. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. I mean, think about it. If there really are aliens out there, and they wanted to hide out somewhere on Earth, where better than the bottom of the ocean? It's dark, it's deep, and we humans don't know much about what's down there. It would be the perfect spot for a secret base. And that's another thing. There have been rumors for years about some kind of underwater facility off the coast of Washington. Most people dismiss it as just a crazy conspiracy theory, but what if there's something to it? What if that's where this thing came from? Now, I'm not saying I'm 100% certain that what I saw was an alien ship. I know how it sounds, and I'm sure plenty of folks would think I'm nuts if they heard me talking like this. But I can't ignore what my gut is telling me. And my gut says that there's something going on out there that we don't understand. Take it for what it's worth. But if you're out there on the water and you see something you can't explain, don't be afraid to speak up. I've been fishing on Lake Huron for over 30 years. It was a clear, calm morning. I headed out early around 5.30 a.m., hoping to catch some lake trout. I was maybe two miles offshore, just south of Drummond Island. The sun was barely starting to come up. I had my line in the water and was sipping coffee when I saw this dark shape gliding under the surface maybe 30 yards from my boat. At first, I thought it was a sturgeon. We get some big ones out there, but as it got closer, I could make out more details and I tell you, my blood ran cold. It had to be at least 20, maybe 30 feet long. Its skin was dark and smooth, almost rubbery looking. But here's the thing. It had this long, slender neck leading to a small head. I only caught a glimpse, but it sure looked like it had this elongated snout, kind of like a crocodile. The craziest part was the flippers. It had these two big diamond-shaped flippers near the front, and I swear I could see two more smaller ones in the back as it moved past. The body tapered into this long, powerful-looking tail. It moved in this graceful, undulating way, almost like a snake. I've never seen anything swim like that. It was completely silent, just gliding through the water cool as you please. It gave me goosebumps. The whole encounter probably only lasted 20 seconds or so. It never surfaced, just moved past underwater and disappeared into the depths. I didn't even think to grab my camera. I was so shocked. I know it sounds crazy. I've tried to reason it out, but I can't shake what I saw. I'm no marine biologist, but I've been on these waters all my life. And I tell you, what I saw that day was no fish, eel, or sturgeon. If I had to compare it to anything, I'd say it looked like a damn plesiosaur, like something out of a textbook on prehistoric sea monsters. The head and snout were the eeriest part. The head was small compared to the body, kind of wedge-shaped. The snout was long and pointed, tapering off at the end like a cone. It wasn't super sharp, but it definitely wasn't rounded or bulbous. I couldn't see any nostrils, but there were these two dark spots on either side of the head that could have been eyes. They were pretty far back, right where the head met the neck. I didn't get a good enough look to tell if they were actually eyes or just markings. Here's the thing that really stuck with me though. When it turned its head slightly, I swear I saw something glint in the early morning light. It was only for a split second, but I could have sworn it was teeth. Not a whole mouthful, but a few poking out from the end of the snout. They were conical, kind of like a crocodile's teeth, but not as numerous or as large. 
It's hard to say for certain, given how brief the sighting was and how the light was hitting the water, but I can't shake the image of those pointed, conical teeth. It's seared into my memory. I've gone over it a thousand times in my head, trying to make sense of what I saw. I keep coming back to those teeth. Why would it have teeth like that? What does it eat? How has something that big gone unnoticed in Lake Huron? I don't have any answers. I just know what I saw. And I know it's not something I'll ever forget, no matter how much time passes. It's out there, swimming in the depths, and we have no idea what it is or what it's capable of. One thing that struck me was how silent the whole encounter was. You'd think something that big moving through the water would make a sound, but there was nothing. No splashing, no whooshing, no churning of the water. It was eerie, the way it glided past without making a ripple. The only sound was the gentle lapping of the waves against my boat and the distant cry of a gull. It was like the creature was part of the water itself, moving through it like a ghost. But then, just as it was slipping out of sight, I heard something. It was faint, almost drowned out by the ambient noise of the lake. At first, I thought I was imagining it, but then I heard it again. It was a sort of clicking or snapping sound, like someone running their fingernail along the teeth of a comb. It was rhythmic, almost pulsing. It seemed to be coming from the direction of the creature, but I couldn't be sure. It lasted maybe three or four seconds, then faded away. I strained my ears, but I didn't hear it again. I've wondered about that sound. Was it coming from the creature? If so, what was it? Some kind of echolocation, like a dolphin or a bat? A way of communicating with others of its kind? Or was it just a random noise? Some quirk of the lake's acoustics that had nothing to do with the creature? I'll probably never know, but it's one more piece of the puzzle. One more unanswered question in an encounter full of them. It's a sound I'll remember, along with the sight of that dark, sinuous shape gliding silently through the deep. This is in full detail and as much info as I can give. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope there are answers. It was a sunny day off the coast of California, and I was on a recovery dive. I was about 30 feet down, searching for a sunken boat when I felt like something was watching me. I turned around to see what it was. When I turned around, I saw something that I just couldn't believe, and I froze in shock. I saw floating in the water, right in front of me. It had sickly gray skin that looked almost translucent. It was thin and elongated in a way that didn't seem quite human, and it had no eyes where it should have had eyes. It had these smooth, featureless patches of skin where the eyes should be. It had no nose. Instead, it had slits like a snake's nose on the front of its face, and they flared open and closed as if it was smelling the water. It had a small, circular mouth that seemed to be constantly moving, like it was trying to speak, and it had these odd, inhuman-like teeth that were needle-sharp. It also had webbed hands and feet, with long, sharp claws on each finger and toe. I was panicking, and I tried to swim away, but my body wouldn't respond. I was looking at the creature, and I noticed it was looking vacantly in front of it, and then it turned and looked at me, and it tilted its head like a dog, and its mouth opened in what I can only describe as a smile. I'll also add, its skin seemed to ripple and change color, like it was camouflaging itself to match the surrounding water. It then did something that I still don't understand. It pulled out a strange black box from somewhere on its body and pointed it directly at me. At this point, I started to feel a tingling sensation all over my body, like I was being electrocuted and I could barely move my limbs. I was completely terrified and I thought I was going to die right then and there. The creature started to swim towards me, still pointing the black box, and the closer it got, the more intense the paralysis became. 
I could see it getting closer and closer, and I saw the water rippling around it as it swam, keep this in memory. It got within arm's reach, and I mustered all my strength to kick out at it, somehow managing to knock the black box out of its hand. As soon as I did that, the paralysis lifted, and I was able to swim away as fast as I could. I didn't look back. I just swam until I reached the surface and got back on the boat. I retired from diving after that because I couldn't handle the trauma. I considered the possibilities of what it could have been because I am naturally a skeptic, and I always look into everything that happens so I can disprove, prove the existence of something. 1. I was fully alert and responsive, so it wasn't nitrogen narcosis or hallucinations. 2. There were no other divers or boats in the area, so it couldn't have been a person in a costume or a prank. 3. This was a long time ago, and I think about this moment every day, and I always recall the same details, etc. I even drew a picture of the creature after it happened, so if it was a hallucination, it would have faded from my memory by now. 4. I had strange circular burns on my skin where the black box's energy hit me. 5. The boat's sonar picked up an unidentified object in the water at the same time and location of my encounter, but this was my experience, and I still wonder what it could have been. I've researched slightly, and I've only told a few people about it, so I don't know what it could have been. Thanks. I've been fishing down here in the Louisiana bayous for as long as I can remember, but something happened back in the summer of 2002 that I just can't explain. It was a hot, sticky night, and I was out on the water in my old boat, trying to catch some catfish and enjoy the quiet. I was just about to pack it in for the night when I saw something weird under the surface. At first, I thought it was just the moonlight playing tricks on my eyes, but as I looked closer, I realized there were these glowing, pulsing balls of light moving around down there. They were like nothing I'd ever seen before. They changed colors, going from bright white to blue and green, and they moved together like they were dancing some kind of underwater ballet. I couldn't look away. As I watched, the lights started coming closer to my boat. I got a real funny feeling in my gut like something wasn't right. And then, all of a sudden, my boat's engine just conked out. I tried to start it up again, but it was like those lights had put a hex on it or something. I started to get a little spooked, thinking I might be stuck out there with these strange lights all night. But just as quick as they showed up, they started to disappear. They got dimmer and dimmer until they finally blinked out, one by one. And the second they were gone, my engine started up again like nothing had happened. I got out of there as fast as I could, and when I got back to the dock, I tried to tell a couple of my buddies what I'd seen, but they just laughed and said I must have had too much to drink out there. But I know what I saw, and it wasn't the booze talking. Those lights were real, and they were like nothing I've ever seen before or since. I've been back out on the bayou more times than I can count, but I've never run into anything like that again. I don't know what those lights were, or where they came from, but I'll never forget the way they danced together under the water. The more I think about it, the more I'm sure they weren't from around here, if you catch my drift. The way they moved and danced together, it was like they had a mind of their own, like they were alive and smart. Got me thinking. What if they weren't from our neck of the woods at all? What if they were some kind of beings from another dimension, just poking their noses into our world for a bit? I know it sounds like something out of a sci-fi flick, but the more I mull it over, the more it starts to make sense. I mean, why else would they just pop up out of nowhere and then vanish into thin air? And the way they messed with my boat's engine, it's like they had some kind of power over our gadgets. That just ain't natural, no matter how you look at it. I've been reading up on this stuff since then, about other dimensions and parallel worlds and all that. 
I don't claim to be some kind of egghead who understands all the science behind it, but from what I can tell, there's a whole lot we don't know about how reality works. Who's to say there couldn't be other realms out there? With critters so different from us, we can't even wrap our heads around them. Now, I'm not saying that's 100% what I saw that night, but I got this gut feeling that those lights were something more than just a weird quirk of nature. They had a kind of smarts to them, a sense of purpose that I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe I'm just a loony old fisherman, seeing things that aren't there, but I've been around the block enough times to know when to trust my instincts, and my instincts are telling me those lights were something special, something that doesn't quite fit in our world. Anyway, I just wanted to share what's been rattling around in my head with you, see if maybe you had any ideas or if you'd come across anything like this before. I appreciate you taking the time to hear me out. I've been hesitant to share this story for decades, but a recent conversation with a fellow diver finally convinced me to come forward. In 1998, I was part of a saturation diving team performing routine maintenance on an oil platform about 100 miles off the Louisiana coast. We were working at a depth of around 400 feet, with limited visibility even with our powerful lights. On the third day of the dive, my partner and I were welding a repair on one of the platform legs when I noticed a strange shimmer in the water just beyond the reach of my light. At first, I thought it might be a school of fish, but then I realized the shape was far too large. As I focused my light on the anomaly, the shimmering suddenly coalesced into a distinct form, and my blood ran cold. Hovering there in the murk was a humanoid figure, but one with pale, mottled skin that appeared almost translucent. Its limbs were long and thin, with webbed hands and feet, but the most terrifying aspect was the eyes, huge, bulbous, and utterly black, like an alien. It regarded me with a cold, inscrutable gaze. I signaled frantically to my partner, who turned and saw the creature as well. It cocked its head in an almost curious manner before raising one elongated arm and pointing directly at us. Then, quick as a flash, it darted away into the gloom with an uncanny grace and vanished. The whole encounter lasted maybe ten seconds, but felt like an eternity. Back on the surface, we reported what we had seen, but the company's supervisor laughed it off, saying we must have gotten narked at that depth. But I know what I saw, and I'll never forget those haunting eyes. I've since heard stories shared quietly among other gulf divers about glimpses of pale, otherworldly creatures in the deep. I believe there are intelligences we were not meant to encounter living in the darkness of the abyss. I wanted to share an update to my previous email about the strange encounter experienced by my former colleague, JT, while diving in the Gulf of Mexico in 1998. Shortly after sending you that report, I received an urgent message from JT with some deeply disturbing new information. Apparently, another diving colleague of his, who I will call MR, reached out to JT after hearing about his story through the commercial diving grapevine. MR revealed that he had experienced an almost identical encounter in 2012, also while diving in the Gulf. According to MR, he was performing a routine inspection on an underwater pipeline when he suddenly noticed a shimmering humanoid figure observing him from the murky depths. He described the same pale, webbed limbs and unsettling, oversized black eyes that JT had reported. The creature seemed to study him for a moment before pointing directly at him with an elongated finger, then vanishing into the gloom with astonishing speed. Badly shaken, MR immediately terminated the dive and returned to the surface. He dutifully reported what he had seen to his supervisor, but was shocked by the response he received. 
His superiors warned him in no uncertain terms to keep absolutely silent about the incident. They made it very clear that if he spoke to anyone else about what he had witnessed, the military would get involved and his career, and perhaps even his life, would be in jeopardy. JT says that since he started quietly sharing his own story, several other Gulf divers have cautiously approached him with similar tales of encounters with pale, otherworldly beings in the deep. He's noticed a disturbing pattern of oil company executives and military officials ruthlessly suppressing these reports and threatening anyone who tries to speak out. I find myself deeply troubled by the implications of these revelations. What are these creatures that divers are encountering in the lightless abyss? And why are the oil industry and the U.S. armed forces so determined to keep their existence hidden from the public? I can't help but fear that there is a vast and terrible truth lurking beneath the waves that we are not meant to know. I realized that I had forgotten to include a crucial piece of information that JT had shared with me. I believe it sheds even more light on the disturbing mystery of these deep sea encounters. According to JT, one of the divers who reached out to him after hearing his story claimed to have served in a special unit of the US Navy in the early 2000s. This diver, who I will call LK, said that his unit was tasked with investigating unconventional threats in the world's oceans. He hinted heavily that this included dealing with the same pale, otherworldly creatures that JT and MR had encountered in the Gulf. But here's where it gets even more chilling. LK told JT that the highest concentration of these beings seems to be in the Black Sea, off the coast of Turkey and Bulgaria. Apparently, the military has known about their presence there for decades and has even engaged in violent confrontations with them. LK spoke of a terrifying incident in the late 1990s where a U.S. submarine in the Black Sea was allegedly attacked by a swarm of these creatures. He described them using their long, webbed limbs to tear at the submarine's hull, while the crew inside frantically tried to fight them off with high-powered sonic weapons. The sub barely managed to escape and limp back to port, its exterior scored with deep gashes. Since then, according to LK, the military has been waging a secret war against these creatures, trying to keep their existence hidden from the public while also attempting to study and contain them. He claimed that the oil companies have been pressured to help cover up any sightings in the Gulf, as the government fears widespread panic if the truth got out. I find myself at a loss for words in the face of these revelations. The notion that these beings are not only real, but that the military has been actively engaging with them for years is truly staggering. And the fact that they seem to be most concentrated in the Black Sea raises even more disturbing questions. What is it about that particular region that attracts them? And what do they want? But I truly appreciate your willingness to listen and to share these accounts with your readers. It's vital that we continue to shed light on these mysteries even in the face of the powerful forces that wish to keep them hidden. Thank you for all that you do. I was 18, and it was a hot summer day in Minnesota. My friends and I decided to go swimming in this small lake near our hometown. It was a place we'd been to a bunch of times before. I was out in the water, maybe chest deep, just cooling off. I remember the sun was really bright, glinting off the surface of the lake. The water was murky, kind of a greenish-brown color. You couldn't see more than a few feet down. All of a sudden, I felt something wrap around my leg. At first, I thought it was just a weed or something, but then it tightened, like a hand grabbing me. It started pulling me under. I thrashed and kicked, trying to get free. I managed to get my head above water and I screamed for help. My friends were on the shore, 
but they were too far away to do anything. That's when I saw it, rising up out of the water right in front of me. It was humanoid, but not human. It had this scaly, greenish-gray skin and these big, bulbous eyes. Its mouth was wide and full of sharp teeth. It looked just like the creature from the Black Lagoon, that old horror movie monster. But this was real, and it had me. It started dragging me down into the murky depths. I fought with everything I had, punching, clawing, trying to gouge at its eyes. But it was so strong, and the water was slowing my movements. I could feel my lungs burning, screaming for air. Darkness started to creep in at the edges of my vision. I thought I was going to die. And then, just as suddenly as it grabbed me, it let go. I don't know why. Maybe it got spooked by my struggling. Maybe it just decided I wasn't worth the trouble. But it released its grip and vanished back into the depths. I clawed my way to the surface, gasping and coughing. I swam for shore like my life depended on it, which I guess it did. My friends were there, wide-eyed and terrified. They'd seen the whole thing. We got out of there and never went back. I still have nightmares about it sometimes. That feeling of being dragged down, of seeing that monstrous face looming up out of the water. I know what I saw. I know it was real. And I know there's something in that lake, something that's not supposed to be there. Something that's waiting, watching, ready to pull unsuspecting swimmers down into the dark water. I got a pretty good look at the thing when it was pulling me under. Its skin was rough and scaly, like a fish or a lizard. But it had arms and legs, and hands with webbed fingers that ended in claws. Its head was sort of shaped like a person's, but not quite. It was more elongated, with a flat nose and these wide, lipless jaws. And its eyes, man, they were huge and round, bulging out of its head. They were this pale, milky color, almost glowing in the murky water. The thing was big, too, at least as tall as me, and a lot bulkier. It had these broad, muscular shoulders and a thick neck. Its body tapered down to a long, powerful tail that it used to propel itself through the water. I remember it had these strange, fin-like protrusions on its back and the sides of its head. They were a darker color than the rest of its skin, almost black. They looked sharp, like they could cut you if you brushed against them. And the smell. Even in the water, I could smell it. It was this pungent, fishy odor mixed with something else. Something musky and foul like rotting vegetation. The whole experience probably only lasted a minute or two, but it felt like an eternity. Every detail of that creature is seared into my brain. I can still see it when I close my eyes. I've never seen anything like it, before or since, and I hope to God I never do again. Because there's no doubt in my mind that what I encountered that day was something unnatural, something that doesn't belong in our world. I've heard stories since then, whispers and rumors about other sightings in lakes and rivers across the country. I don't know if they're true. I don't know if what I saw is the only one of its kind, or if there are more out there. For the past five years, I have been working as a lighthouse keeper on a remote island off the coast of Scotland. It's a solitary life but one I've grown accustomed to over time. However, last week, something happened that has left me questioning the very nature of my reality. It was a particularly foggy night, with visibility reduced to mere feet in front of the lighthouse. As I went about my usual duties, I suddenly heard a haunting melody drifting across the water. The song was unlike anything I had ever heard before. It was mournful ethereal, and seemed to penetrate the very depths of my soul. It certainly didn't sound human, but I couldn't quite place its origin. Intrigued and slightly unnerved, I stepped outside onto the gallery deck, straining my eyes to see through the thick blanket of fog. Despite my efforts, 
I could discern no source for the eerie music. The song continued for what felt like hours, its notes echoing across the waves and seeming to come from all directions at once. Eventually, as dawn approached, the melody faded away. The following morning, I made my way down to the rocky shore below the lighthouse, hoping to clear my head. As I approached the water's edge, I noticed something peculiar, strange, spiral-shaped markings etched into the rocks. They were unlike any natural formation I had ever encountered, and I couldn't shake the feeling that they were somehow connected to the unearthly song from the night before. I have no explanation for what I experienced that night, but it has left an indelible mark on my psyche. I'm reaching out in the hopes that perhaps someone among your readership might have insight into this phenomenon or has had a similar encounter. Until then, I remain vigilant in my duties, ever wary of the mysterious forces that seem to inhabit this lonely stretch of sea and shore. In an attempt to uncover more information about the peculiar markings I found on the rocks, I reached out to a local historian who specializes in the folklore of the Scottish Isles. According to ancient legends, the spiral patterns I described have been associated with a malevolent entity known as the Siren of the Mists. This creature is said to lure unsuspecting sailors to their doom with its enchanting song leaving behind those very same markings as a sign of its presence. But that's not all. The historian also revealed that the island I call home has a dark history of unexplained disappearances. Over the centuries, countless ships have vanished without a trace in the waters surrounding the lighthouse, and even some of my predecessors have mysteriously gone missing. Could there be a connection between these disappearances and the Siren of the Mists? As if this wasn't enough to unsettle me, I've begun to experience strange dreams since that fateful night. In these vivid nightmares, I find myself standing at the edge of the rocks, the eerie melody calling out to me from the depths of the fog. Each time, I feel an overwhelming compulsion to step forward into the waiting arms of the sea, only to wake up at the last moment, my heart racing and my body drenched in cold sweat. I can't help but wonder if I've somehow become a target of this ancient malevolent force. The thought that I might one day succumb to its call and become another casualty of the island's dark history is almost too much to bear. One particularly intriguing legend speaks of an ancient clan chief who fell under the spell of the siren's song. According to the story, the chief became so entranced by the haunting melody that he abandoned his people and set out alone in a small boat, never to be seen again. It's said that on the anniversary of his disappearance, the siren's song can still be heard echoing across the waves as if calling out to the lost chief. Another tale tells of a young bride who vanished on her wedding night, leaving behind a groom stricken with grief. The locals whispered that the siren had claimed her, jealous of the couple's happiness. It's believed that the bride's spirit still wanders the rocky shores, forever searching for her lost love. But perhaps the most chilling legend of all is that of the drowned choir, this tale speaks of a group of monks who, centuries ago, set out in a small boat to confront the siren and put an end to its reign of terror. As they approached the creature's lair, they began to chant a sacred hymn, hoping to counteract the siren's enchanting song. But the siren's power was too great, and one by one, the monks fell under its spell leaping into the churning waters never to be seen again. It's said that on certain nights, when the fog is thick and the moon is full, you can still hear the ghostly chant of the drowned choir echoing across the waves. These are just a few of the many legends that seem to surround the enigmatic siren of the mists. I can't help but wonder if there is some grain of truth hidden within these ancient tales. Could the siren be more than just a myth? And if so, 
what does that mean for those of us who find ourselves in its haunting presence? I will continue to investigate this matter, and I'll be sure to keep you and your readers informed of any further developments. In the meantime, I would be grateful for any insights or advice from those who might have knowledge of such otherworldly phenomena. My uncle Dmitri was a sailor in the Soviet Navy back in the 80s. He served on a patrol boat in the Black Sea. He's told me a lot of sea stories over the years, but there's one that always stood out. He swears it's true, and the look in his eyes when he tells it, I can't help but believe him. They were about 20 miles off the coast of Crimea. Dmitri was on deck, having a smoke, when he saw something in the water. At first, he thought it was dolphins, but as it got closer, he realized it was something else entirely. There were three of them, he says, humanoid, but not human. They had these large, black, almond-shaped eyes that reflected the moonlight. Their skin was smooth and pale, almost translucent, and they were wearing some kind of tight-fitting silver suits that shimmered in the water. They were circling the boat, diving in and out of the water with incredible speed and agility. Dimitri says he could feel the boat rocking from the turbulence they created. He yelled for the others, but by the time anyone else got on deck, the creatures were gone. But that's not the end of it. About an hour later, the boat was hit by something hard. Dimitri says it felt like they'd run aground, but they were in deep water. The boat tilted sharply, nearly capsizing. Alarms were blaring, people were shouting. It was chaos. And then, just as suddenly as it started, it stopped. The boat righted itself, and everything was calm again. They checked for damage but couldn't find any. It was like nothing had happened. Except Dimitri knew what he saw. He says he'll never forget those eyes, those suits. He's convinced that those creatures, whatever they were, had something to do with what happened to the boat. He reported it to his superiors, of course, but you can imagine how that went. They told him to keep quiet, that it was probably just some strange ocean life and rough seas. But Dimitri knows better. He still has nightmares about it sometimes. He'll wake up in a cold sweat, yelling about the silver men in the sea. I don't know what to make of it, but I know my uncle. He's not a man to make things up or exaggerate. Something happened out there that night. Something that can't be explained. Years later, I was having a drink with a friend who works in the maritime industry. He's a serious guy, not prone to wild tales. I told him about my uncle's story, expecting him to laugh it off. But he didn't. Instead, he leaned in close and told me something that sent a chill down my spine. Turns out, my uncle's story wasn't unique. There have been a string of similar reports from that area of the Black Sea, dating back decades. Ship captains, fishermen, even vacationers, all describing encounters with humanoid creatures emerging from the depths. The details vary, but the core elements are always the same. The large, dark eyes, the shimmery silver suits, the incredible speed and agility in the water, and the aggressive behavior towards boats and ships. Some reports even describe these creatures coming onto land. Fishermen claim to have found strange, three-toed footprints in the sand, leading from the water's edge before disappearing. A few even swear they've seen the creatures themselves lurking in the shallows at night. There's a theory among some of the old-timers in the region. They believe there's a whole population of these creatures living deep in the Black Sea. Some kind of unknown intelligent species that's been there for who knows how long. They say the military knows about them that they've been covering up incidents for years, silencing witnesses. Some even claim the creatures have some kind of advanced technology, far beyond anything we have. Of course, none of this is officially acknowledged. You won't find any mention of underwater humanoids in any official reports 
or scientific journals. But among the people who've lived and worked on the Black Sea, the stories persist. My friend has heard dozens of these accounts over the years. He's even had a few experiences himself that he can't explain. He doesn't like to talk about it much, but I could see the fear in his eyes as he spoke. It's a lot to take in. Part of me wants to dismiss it. I've been digging into this for years now, and the more I learn, the more convinced I am that there's a massive cover-up going on. It's not just the Black Sea incidents. There are reports of these underwater humanoids from all over the world. The North Atlantic, the South Pacific, the Gulf of Mexico. Wherever there's deep water, there seem to be sightings. And wherever there are sightings, there's a military presence not far behind. Ships and submarines patrolling the area, aircraft flying overhead, even underwater drones and ROVs scanning the depths. They're looking for something. That much is clear. I've spoken to a few people off the record. Retired naval officers, marine biologists, even a couple of government officials. They won't say much, but they've hinted that there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. Apparently, these creatures have been known about at the highest levels for decades. There are classified files, secret underwater bases, even captured specimens if you believe some of the rumors. But it's all kept under the tightest of wraps. The reasons for the secrecy are unclear. Some say it's because the creatures possess advanced technology that the military wants to keep for itself. Others believe there's some kind of communication or even cooperation going on between our governments and these underwater beings. But the most chilling theory I've heard is that these creatures are seen as a threat, that they're hostile to human presence in their domain and that the powers that be are worried about what would happen if the general public found out about them. Imagine the panic, the chaos, people afraid to go near the ocean, maritime trade and travel grinding to a halt, coastal economies collapsing. And if these things can take down ships and boats, what's to stop them from coming ashore and attacking coastal cities? That's the nightmare scenario that I believe is driving the cover-up. Keep the public in the dark, deal with the threat quietly and under the radar. It's a chilling thought, but it's the only thing that makes sense to me. It's not just the Black Sea. As I dug deeper, I started to find similar reports from other parts of the world. Two areas in particular kept coming up. The Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Greece and the Indian Ocean around South Africa. In Greece, there are stories going back centuries about creatures living in the deep sea caves and underwater caverns that riddle the coastline. The ancient Greeks even had a name for them, the Telchines, described as skilled metalworkers and shapeshifters who could live both on land and in the sea. Modern day accounts are strikingly similar to what my uncle described fishermen and divers encountering pale, humanoid figures with large eyes and shimmery skin darting through the water at incredible speeds. Some even claim to have been approached or attacked by these creatures. There's a particular hot spot around the island of Crete. Locals there have a long history of stories about underwater beings, and there have been a number of unexplained disappearances and drownings in the area that some attribute to these creatures. In South Africa, the reports are more recent, but no less disturbing. Over the past few decades, there have been a number of incidents involving boats and ships being damaged or even sunk by unknown forces off the coast. Survivors describe huge, powerful figures rising up from the depths and attacking their vessels. Some even claim to have seen these creatures on shore, lurking around the edges of coastal towns and villages at night. There's a local legend there about the Abalungu, said to be a race of underwater people who have a grudge against those who live on land. Some of the older folks in the coastal communities say the Abalungu have always been there, 
watching and waiting. What's striking to me is how similar these accounts are to what my uncle experienced in the Black Sea. The physical descriptions, the aggressive behavior, even the metallic suits, it's all too consistent to be coincidence. I've tried to map out the sightings, looking for patterns or connections. It's not easy. A lot of this information is anecdotal and hard to verify, but there does seem to be a concentration of activity around certain underwater features, deep trenches, submarine volcanoes, areas with a lot of seismic activity. It makes me wonder if these creatures are somehow connected to the geology of these areas. Maybe they're drawn to the energy or the minerals, or maybe they've just found ways to exploit these underwater landscapes for their own purposes. One day, the truth will come out. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, and also since you've made it this far, go ahead and type down below in the comments, never swim again. So that way, I know who made it to the end of the episode and who did not. And like I said, if you guys enjoyed today's stories where you're diving into the oceans and lakes and encountering strange supernatural phenomena in that place, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button because it greatly helps out the channel, of course. And I will see you guys in the very next episode.